The news at noon starts right now. What you're looking at right now is a problem that's been happening since yesterday. This is in the Kerrville area on I-10 westbound. Uh, traffic basically stopped because of issues on the road. You can see all those trucks lined up. They have been lined up for miles upon miles. And they were at a standstill on I-10 all overnight. Kerrville Junction area is how long that, uh, that backup lasted. And it started last evening. Now, earlier this morning, the Kerr County Sheriff's Office told us that the cause of that standstill on I-10 westbound was a jackknifed 18-wheeler. After the incident, though, hundreds of drivers stuck here on the highway. Eventually, TxDOT and DBS troopers were able to get to the area. They began trying to work the scene. One of the drivers we spoke to, Christopher Davis, he was one of those guys stuck in the messy traffic in Kerrville on his way driving from Corpus Christi. Just stay stuck here. I just looked at the time. I called my boss. Say, I ain't gonna make it. <laughs> What's your boss say about this backup? Yeah, uh, he said he, he was checking maps. He got he got his stuff kind of backwards. He said that westbound's over. Say, no, I'm in it. I'm still. I got a bunch of traffic around me. <laughs> and it's it was, our, it's our understanding as well that there were other issues on the road ahead of that 18 wheeler. So it wasn't just one accident. It was a number of stalled vehicles as well. Yeah, he was keeping a positive attitude by calling family and friends, just hanging out on the phone. Yeah, there was actually the frozen roads west of Kerrville were causing part of the problem. And then there was that jackknife 18 wheeler. And that's part of what you see backed up right here in that long line of trucks. It's still freezing in that area, but Justin, the sun is coming out right now. And we assume things while they're moving slowly, they're going to get moving even better now. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so for those folks. I mean, it, the good news here, and I'm, I'm encouraged because temperatures may actually jump above freezing there in Kerrville. Not only that, the sun is out, and even if temperatures are below freezing, the sun tends to melt what we've got there on the ground. So that should improve conditions there. Now it becomes a logistical thing, right? Uh, getting some of those jackknife trucks off the road. Hopefully things improve. 19 this morning in Bernie Stage 21 in San Antonio. 19 in Kerrville, 23 in New Braunfels. It was a cold morning. We had some clearing that allowed those temperatures to really drop down. Look at Rock Springs, 18 earlier this morning. Wind chill values were in the single digits. We have warmed up some, and that's thanks to a large part to clouds clearing out, the sun coming out. But what you'll notice, what looks like clouds there across the hill country, that is actually ice. We can see it with our visible satellite. That uh, we've got clear skies here, but that's ice on the ground that we're seeing. The clouds are moving south and east of San Antonio and continuing to move away. So that's affecting temperatures. We're up to 35 now at the airport above freezing here. The roads are all dry here in San Antonio. We didn't have a whole lot of problems this morning, which is really a uh, great news. 31 still below freezing Canyon Lake 31, just barely below freezing there in Kerrville 32 in Bandera. And as we zoom out, uh, basically, you'll find the freezing temperatures uh, just up there in the hill country and they're borderline They're They're getting there. Wind chill values feels like 25 here in San Antonio. That wind still biting, still gusty, and uh, that'll be the case through the afternoon. So here's what the forecast looks like. We should get up to about 38 degrees. Wind chill values will stay in the 20s. And then tonight with clear skies, we're going to see another very cold night. Temperatures likely dropping into the 20s by tomorrow morning. Guys. Uh, let's take a look at some of those outages this morning. We know that the, the numbers have been going down. CPS has been out there with crews all over town trying to get everybody back online. And as of right now, there are 17 active outages and just a total of 144 customers without power. But once again, we know CPS is out there trying to get their customers back online, working hard for the last 24 to 48 hours. In the meantime, a family of six has been left out in the cold after fire ripped through their mobile home in southeast Bear County. That's right. The fire got them out of bed shortly before four this morning. It sent them out into the frigid street that happened at a mobile home park on Trout Lane, not too far from Highway 181. And as Katrina Weber reports, firefighters are pointing to an electrical problem as the cause of that fire. On a frigidly cold morning, fire proved that it is not always a help. Instead of just giving off warmth, it burned through this mobile home in the 5,000 block of Trout Lane. Family woke up to some popping noises coming from the electrical panel um, in the master bedroom area. Before they knew it, there was smoke, then flames. 
The family, a couple and four children, were sent running for safety before four this morning. Firefighters rushed in. Quickly moving fire, especially with the wind. Once that front door was open, then it, the fire just started going through the, the actual structure itself and through the roof. As the family huddled in cars nearby, firefighters went on the attack, hitting the fire with water from above. They did their best to not only put it out, but keep it contained. Firefighters say it took no time at all for the fire to rip through this mobile home. They had to work quickly as well. You can see just how close that house next door is to it, but they managed to keep the fire from spreading. In spite of their efforts, there was no saving the home. The family also may have lost a pet. There were a total of three dogs. One is unaccounted for right now. No other injuries. Firefighters say the American Red Cross will help the people who lived here get back on their feet. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now, while parts of Texas are still dealing with the icy conditions, most areas in our community are getting ready to begin the thaw out. Jonathan Coto has the latest on the city of San Antonio's status right now. It's been a frigid 24 hours in San Antonio, the winter storm dropping temperatures into the 20s. Road conditions seeing several closures, but now things seem to be clearing up for the most part. CPS Energy says they've had crews work throughout yesterday and overnight to bring back power to people affected by the high winds, heavy rain, and to icy conditions. The utility reporting outages impacting about 300 customers, and unlike last year's brutal icing, SAW says they had no weather-related issues with their system and say their equipment, along with their staff, were prepared prepared for the winter weather. And as the storm makes its way out of Texas and to the east, the four city of San Antonio warming shelters closing their doors this noon. The Six Bear County warming shelters in full operation through Saturday or at least until temperatures go up. For a complete list of those locations, go to KSAT.com. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. So to come this half hour, he is putting up all-star numbers, but as of now, won't be an all-star. Larry Ramirez reacted to DeJounte Murray being snubbed from All-Star Weekend. Some national news. Lawmakers from both sides of the aisle praising the U.S. Special Operations raid that took out the leader of ISIS in Syria. That's despite some criticism due to discrepancies about how many people were killed, how many civilians killed, who was responsible for those deaths. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. The top floor of ISIS leader Haji Abdullah's residence reduced to rubble after the Pentagon says he detonated a bomb blowing himself up along with his wife and children as U.S. Special Operations Forces closed in on him. Thanks to the bravery of our troops, this horrible terrorist leader is no more. The Pentagon saying Abdullah played a key role in ISIS's attempt at resurgence, including last month's attack on a Syrian prison that tried to break out thousands of terrorist followers. Hundreds were killed. They're leaderless today. Um, and that's a significant blow. After months of planning, U.S. helicopters descended on the ISIS compound, beginning the two-hour raid. Residents could hear commandos urging women and children to leave the building. U.S. officials say the family on the first floor left safely, and troops set their sight on capturing Abdullah when the blast went off, killing the ISIS leader and his family. But then officials claim an ISIS lieutenant and his wife began firing at U.S. forces from the second floor. Those two were killed, and at least one other child died. U.S. authorities say at least two fighters also came to the compound and were killed by by helicopter gunfire. DOD saying the troops protected 10 people on the ground. It speaks to the level of care uh, that U.S. Special Operations Forces used in this mission, uh, which was designed to preserve innocent life. But there are still discrepancies in the civilian body count and how they died. A review is underway. ISIS fighters were directly or indirectly responsible for every one of those family members who perished in the mission. The Syrian government has yet to comment on the operation, though they rarely do when foreign countries target areas outside of its control. Emwin, ABC News, Washington. Outside with live camp, good news. We are above freezing here in San Antonio. Now if we could just get some of those roads in the hill country out west going to Kerrville and beyond. And look at that, the sun's out too. Up. Yeah, yeah sun's out. I, I think we're going to see some pretty quick improvement today. The numbers are trending in the right direction out there in Kerrville, and the sun is out. That, that helps a lot. As we look at the aquifer, benefiting from that rain, again, uh, over an inch and a half here in San Antonio from the heavy rains uh, Wednesday night and Thursday. 
The aquifer is up 1.6 feet to a 664.4, encouraging sight there. Also good news, mountain cedar dropped today. It's in the low category, molds are low. Good look at forecast as we head into the weekend. A little chilly, but nice nonetheless. We'll take a look, coming up. Sun's out, looks really nice outside, but don't let that deceive you, it's still cold. You know, and I know a lot of people have got their fingers crossed that they did all the right stuff to their pipes. So when this thaw happens, we don't have geysers going off. No, I, I, I hope so. And that's, I, that's the tough part about this. It's, we don't know the damage till later. Till it warms up, right? I, and, and temperatures did get cold last night. Hopefully we took precautions and we're not gonna see any of that. We don't wanna see any of that. that, that was, Last February, right? We uh, we want to put that in our rear view mirror, uh, and hopefully that things go well as, as we do thaw out today. Temperatures starting to jump down into the, the 30s. I want to show you a picture on our uh, KSA Connect. This is uh, making lemonade out of lemons, so to speak. Uh, you see the, the icicles. Now, these were kind of man-made icicles. Uh, looks like you got some rope there. Cool idea. Looks like the kids are enjoying it. Of course, probably out of school. Uh, with the school cancellations today, the concern were some icy roads this morning. Thankfully, a lot of the roads dried out pretty quickly, and now we're, we're doing just fine, and we're above freezing, so everything looks good. 35 degrees at the airport, 38 stints and 38 Kelly, 34 Randolph. We're still looking at a pretty good breeze out of the north-northwest, anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. That makes it feel all that much colder. Satellite picture. Show skies are clearing here around San Antonio. That clearing line now south of town. As we uh, zoom out, you'll see temperatures 31 Kerrville. Again, that's why we're hopeful that that number will jump above freezing. Uh, the ice is already melting. The sun is out, and once the sun comes out, you, you get the melting uh, conditions anyhow. But getting above freezing would also help. 30 in Fredericksburg, 32 Austin. That's another place that needs to thaw out. They had a lot of icy roads this morning. And by the way, what you're seeing here, those are not clouds. That is actually ice on the ground. We can see with the visible satellite picture. Uh, always cool to see after a winter weather event. Wind gusts, gusting to 25 here in town, gusting to 24 in Kerrville, gusting to 30 in New Braunfels. I mentioned that wind. Boy, it makes it feel cold out there. 25 right now, the current wind chill. 31, the wind chill in Hondo. 21 in Kerrville still feels like 19 in Rock Springs. Wind chill values this morning were in the single digits in a lot of spots. So this is actually an improvement. As we look across the state, and again, that is all ice and snow here that we're looking at. These clouds moving away, and you can imagine North Texas, Texas Panhandle, not in good shape. Roads are still very icy up there as well, and probably will be for a while longer. This storm system, the winter weather stretches all the way up into Maine now. This was far reaching, caused a lot of issues, not only here, but uh, for a lot of people across the United States and brought in a lot of cold air. You look at the numbers here, uh, 27 Omaha, 23 Wichita. It's cold here in Texas. Really the only spot that is looking at warm temperatures is Orlando and Miami. Orlando at 83 right now. They're out ahead of that front. The rest of the nation is in the ice box, and uh, that includes Texas. 24 Abilene, 24 Wichita Falls, 20 right now in Amarillo. So our forecast calls for high temperatures being the upper 30s this afternoon. Again, it looks like just about everybody is going to jump above freezing. We'll see some 40s on the map, too. The sun is really helpful in that regard. And then tonight, uh, temperatures will fall back down into the 20s. Right now we're going 26 here in San Antonio. You'll get some colder temperatures, Fredericksburg to Kerrville. Models are trending just a little bit warmer tonight, and just a little bit uh, with a bit of a jump in that temperature. It helps. Uh, again, 26 here in town, still a freeze for sure. And as we look at the weekend, 50s both days. We will see freezes both Saturday and Sunday morning. And of course, we've got the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive coming up tomorrow. Starts at 11 a.m. It's going to be a little chilly. Temperatures will be in the 40s when things get underway. Uh, but again, by the afternoon, it'll feel pretty nice. 50 Saturday, 55 Sunday. We've got 54 Monday and then 60s next week. So improvement. Not a lot of rain there in the seven-day forecast, but we did get some good rain out of this system. That's kind of lost with all this wintry weather. But before the winter weather came in, it, it rained uh, pretty good around here, guys. Yeah, almost two inches in some spots. Yep. Thank you so much, Justin.
So you saw those temperatures in Florida, mm -hmm. 83 and what yeah. you say, 83 in Orlando. Nice. The heat come to San Antonio, and apparently they brought a lot of that heat with them. Yeah, and on they the, stayed hot. Yeah, they did stay hot on the court. But you know, though, it wasn't a fair fight because the Spurs were missing three starters. I think they were missing four players in total last night. They're obviously missing three of their starters. So again, not a fair fight. So in the end, the Heat, second best in the East, certainly took care of business. And the T-Wolves, Anthony Edwards, he made the media wait while he was placing his food order. We got it coming up. The Spurs struggled to score last night without injured starters Jante Murray, Jakob Pertl, and Doug McDermott. And the Spurs led Miami by as many as six points in the first quarter thanks to Derek White, who scored eight of his team-high 22 points in the opening frame. Trey Jones was the only other Spur to reach double digits with 16 points. Second quarter, Tyler Hero hits this jumper near the elbow to give the Heat the lead for good, 23-21. He scored a game-high 24 points off the bench. Miami, second best in the East, led by as many as 26 after after this hero dunk in the fourth quarter, he'd take it 112 to 95. Now White tried to carry the load with a handful of his teammates out. I was just trying to be aggressive. Um, I mean, I knew DJ and Doug were out, so I just, and Yak, so I just try to um, be aggressive, make some shots early, and just try to get going from there. Spurs will host the Rockets tonight at 7.30. Now, Houston last played on Wednesday night, and they beat the Cavaliers 115-104 to, to snap an 11-game home skid. Christian Wood scored 21 points to tie for team high honors. Houston sits last in the West at 15-36 and 36 with seven of their wins on the road. DeJounte Murray was not voted into this year's All-Star game as a reserve by the league's head coaches last night after he missed out on an opportunity to be in the starting lineup via the fan voting, despite the fact Murray is having the best season of his NBA career with 10 of his franchise tying 14 triple doubles coming this season. Last night he was sidelined with a sore left wrist. Warriors Draymond Green says Murray is an all-star. He's continued to grow each and every year. You're talking a kid who had an, an ACL injury, rehab, came back stronger. And if you follow DeJounte at all, the kid lives in the gym. So uh, hopefully he'll get rewarded one of these days soon. Um, I think he may have a chance to get rewarded because I won't be able to play in the All-Star game. So he'll, he may have a chance to get rewarded um, by Commissioner Silver, and I hope that comes to fruition for him because he deserves it. Check out your Western Conference All-Star Reserves. You have Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Luka Doncic, Rudy Gobert, Draymond Green, who just said he's not going to play, Donovan Mitchell, and Carl Anthony Towns. Now DeJounte can still make the All-Star game as an injury replacement. Minnesota won at Detroit 128 to 117 last night. Warren High School great Torian Prince scored 23 points for Minnesota off the bench, making five of six three-pointers. Anthony Edwards led the Timberwolves with 25. And then after the game, he made reporters wait to ask him questions while he ordered dinner for Mickey D's. Listen up. Hold on, y'all don't ask no questions yet. I'm trying to put an order in. <laughs> Where you from? McDonald's. Yeah, there. What's, what's on the menu tonight? Chris, he said no questions. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Tell him to lock in, man. Hold on, hold on. I got one more thing. McChickens. McChickens. Oh, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. Customized, no ice. All right, let's get it. Boom. Good? Yes, ma'am. Good? Who that? Good? Yep. I just got it. Hold on. Let me pay for it. All right. Hold on. Two seconds. All right, David. Hold on. No crosstalk, guys. That's I was right. about to I was no about to say, I've got, I've got look an alarm. Look at you. I'm going to go Jimmy John's, though, because they're freaky fast. Yeah, they're really fast. All right. While well, y'all are ordering food, we'll continue with the noon show. There could soon be a new federal holiday added, the measure that's gaining support from lawmakers still ahead. And the Biden administration wants to make changes to school lunches. We'll look at the new nutrition standards that aim to make the meals healthier. Coming up. We want to take you back outside, give you a look at how things are shaping up. This is live cam. This is unfortunately where so many trucks and cars are right now trapped on I-10 in Kerrville. This is, uh, what did we say, mile marker 511. And this is the westbound lanes of I-10. 
But then there's another trans guide camera we want to show you where the traffic is actually moving. This is eight miles down the road. Uh, so it is breaking up this big traffic jam. It's just going to take a while for all that to clear. There was some fear that these trucks would not be able to move until tomorrow afternoon. That was a big fear this morning, but uh, obviously they were able to get the jackknife truck off the road and the sun is out and some of the roads have been uh, able to dry up a little bit and get these trucks and these cars moving. But as you see that camera we showed you earlier, that's how far this traffic was backed up is these trucks and cars aren't even moving yet. So it's yeah, taking and, a while. And it goes miles beyond this as well. Yeah, it comes all the way back to like Hunt and back towards back uh, towards San Antonio. So these these cars and trucks are still waiting for that traffic to get going ahead and everybody's moving slow. You can see the eastbound lanes, not a lot of traffic on the eastbound side because they were dealing with the um, ice on the roads as well way back uh, east. Yeah. So it's uh, it's still slow going, but at least some of these trucks and cars are moving. Just know that if you're headed westbound on I-10, you may run into this still. Uh, it's going to take a while for it to break up. Meanwhile, across the country, the same winter storm that caused our ice also dumped a lot of snow on a long stretch of the U.S. More than a foot of snow fell in parts of the Midwest, and it also caused a tornado in Alabama that killed one person. ABC's Trevor Alt is in Cleveland, Ohio, with a look at the snowy conditions that people are dealing with in that community. These are the remnants of about 24 hours of constant snowfall here in Cleveland. Parts of the region got as much as a foot of snow. And look at the impact on the roads here, because even with the plows running nonstop, I mean, you see the snow piles, the roads are just absolutely blanketed. And that's because of the wind that we've seen. Even when the plows would come by, the gusts would then just bring the snow right back into the street. And this morning now, we've seen wind chills in the single digits easily uh, occasionally and in the future dipping below zero as the temperatures now continue to fall. We've seen a lot of these snow piles are actually frozen already, and that actually further complicates the cleanup of the roads because as the temperature on the street continues to fall, the salt is less effective at melting the ice. And so even though now with the bulk of the snowfall is behind us, we're looking at likely another day of treacherous travel. Trevor Alt, ABC News, Cleveland. That's the good news. We're not dealing with that right now. So, yeah, it looks a lot nicer here than Cleveland, Ohio. Let me tell you. We like to do our one day of winter weather and then move along. We don't like <laughs> long stretches here in South Texas. We'll take one day of it. We uh, we had to deal with some of that yesterday. There was some ice in spots even here around San Antonio, but everything has cleared up. The roads are dry now. We're above freezing. Everything's looking good. Now we just love to kind of look back and see some of the pictures. Take a look at this one on our KSAC Connect. Another cool shot. This is some cactus with some ice on it this morning and uh, frosty cactus, if you will, uh, sent in by a, a PINS user. We, we love the pictures. You can keep sending them in. We'll get uh, as many as we can on air for you. Uh, there's look the uh, satellite picture. Shows you that the clouds are moving out. We're seeing full sun at this point. That's going to allow temperatures to jump up into the upper 30s by this afternoon. Now, the cloud cover is still holding on in places like Pleasanton and Gonzales and over towards Howitzville, but eventually you'll see some sun too as that cloud line moves east, that clearing line. And then back here, this is all ice that is still showing up on the visible satellite picture. So we know there are Kerrville, Junction, Sonora along I-10, that's still fairly icy. And then obviously up in the hill country, Fredericksburg, even around Austin, still dealing with some ice on the ground there. But temperatures jumping above freezing, that obviously helps, and the sun being out helps too. 32 Canyon Lake, 32 in Bolverde, 35 Comfort, 32 right now, Bernie Stage, 29 Lost Maples. A lot of places now above freezing, 40 in Del Rio, 37 down there in Carrizo Springs. The wind's still fairly strong, though, and that means the wind chill. It's there. 25 is what it feels like here in town. Still feels like it's in the low 20s, Fredericksburg down to Kerrville. The forecast for today, 38 degrees. The forecast high, we dropped down to 34 at 6 p.m., back down below freezing tonight. Likely some 20s on the map by the time we get into tomorrow morning. We'll talk more about that the weekend and a warm-up ahead coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. U.S. officials have released intelligence showing Russia's plans to depict a fake Ukrainian attack and the U.S. taking a rare step of making it public to dissuade Russia from moving forward. ABC's Ian Panel has the latest. 
This morning, President Putin landing in Beijing for the start of the Winter Olympics and a one-on-one -on -one with President Xi Jinping of China. Both have strained relations with America. The Kremlin claiming that China now agrees with its security demands over Ukraine, though Beijing hasn't quite put it like that. Meanwhile, the first of 1,700 American paratroopers landing in Europe as part of President Biden's order to send 3,000 U.S. troops to bolster NATO's eastern flank, as tensions remain over that Russian troop buildup on Ukraine's borders. Now the Biden administration is claiming the Kremlin is plotting a false attack operation to justify an invasion of Ukraine. The administration isn't offering any evidence, but it's warning that Russia could even release fake images to justify sending troops in. Now, releasing this kind of intelligence is unusual, but the administration clearly calculating that by going public, it could stop such an operation. The Kremlin denying those allegations with Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov calling it nonsense. Ian Panel, ABC News in Kiev, Ukraine. After major computer hacks took over headlines in recent years, the federal government says it's making moves to put a stop to it. The Department of Homeland Security has announced the creation of a new cyber safety review board. It will include people from the public and private sectors. It'll examine significant hacking incidents and recommend improvements. The new board is modeled after the National Transportation Safety Board, which reviews incidents such as plane crashes. Plans to create the new board started last May. Some supporters of the new board have criticized DHS for taking so long to get it up and running. U.S. employers stepping up their hiring in January. The Labor Department says 467,000 jobs were added last month. That's despite a wave of Omicron infections that sickened millions of workers. The wave kept customers at home and it left businesses short-staffed. Today's Labor Department's report also showed the unemployment rate rose a little bit. And the U.S. Department of Agriculture is issuing new nutrition standards for meals served to children in public schools. Specifically, milk, whole grains, and sodium will be affected. Schools will be allowed to offer flavored low-fat 1% milk, and 80% of grains must be whole grain rich. Sodium limits will be lowered by 10% starting in the 2023-2024 school year. The USDA points out that these changes are traditional to help schools recover from COVID-19 and supply chain challenges. The agency plans to develop more long-term standards for the 24-25 school year. The last major update to school nutrition standards came back in 2012. Lunar New Year could become the newest federal holiday. 40 lawmakers are sponsoring the Lunar New Year Day Act in the U.S. House. If it's passed, it would create the nation's 12th federal holiday. Lunar New Year begins the Chinese Zodiac, which represents or repeats every 12 years. It's celebrated widely in Chinese, Vietnamese, South Korean and other Asian communities. 2022 is the year of the tiger. Go Tigers. And it began on Tuesday. Each federal holiday requires congressional approval. A budding young author's homemade book became a runaway hit. How it was discovered by library workers. And Mario Barros, one day away from what could be the biggest fight of his career. Larry Ramirez with a final Vegas match preview. Hello everyone, this is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Spotify shares taking a nosedive that after providing some weak guidance going forward, the disappointing news overshadowed better than expected earnings numbers for Spotify's fourth quarter. The music streaming platform met expectations in regards to user growth, but they're forecasting a rough start to the year. Spotify says they're forecasting 418 million active users and 183 premium subscribers for the year. Meanwhile, Facebook co-founder Mark Zuckerberg saw his net worth fall by nearly $30 billion. That following Meta's market collapse on Thursday, that's the second largest single day drop in history, following the largest single day plunge in Meta's history since they went public. The company lost over 200 billion in market cap. Zuckerberg currently owns 13% of Meta shares. And it might be a little harder to find those Valentine's Day sweets for your partner this year. That's because Hershey is saying that they're running low on Valentine's Day candy. This is they suffer from a labor shortage in factory capacity. And they're not the only ones struggling to spread the love. Mondelez, the company that makes Oreos, also low on inventory, that after enduring a strike among their unionized workers last year. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Pachado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. 
This is not a whale of a tale because it's true. A whale and a dolphin becoming fast friends. A photographer in Hawaii caught the pair swimming together. He says he was on the shore in Oahu when he spotted the whale first. So he flew his drone toward it and then he saw the dolphin playing there as well. And the duo spinning and playing around together in the water, having a good old time. Meantime, a different kind of friendship, some fishing buddies finding some creative ways to talk a little or a lot of trash. Okay, first off, his fishing buddies and they're talking trash to each other while they're fishing. Imagine One of them rented that. a billboard calling out his friends subpar fishing skills. David V says he decided to get the billboard after his friend Troy got an actor to join in the fun. You guys really think you're going to beat Troy on your ice fishing trip this year? <laughs> <laughs> We're fans of Adam Sandler's comedy classic, Happy Gilmore. That was Shooter McGavin. Remember him? All right. V says the trash talking ramps up each year because of the annual fishing trip that he takes with his friends. But it's all in good fun. Fisherman talking trash. A young Arthur in Boise, Idaho, didn't want to deal with the hassle of getting his book published through a big company. So he just took matters in his own hand and dropped it off at the local library. It's kind of an accident. Library workers found the handwritten book. They loved it. So the second grader, Dylan Helbig, found out his novel was a hit after he fessed up that he'd left the book there without permission. And then he went back to retrieve it. When he didn't see it on the shelf, he discovered that employees had found the 88-page novel. They liked it so much, they made it an official selection in their graphic novel section. That's because the book also contains several drawings. Library workers thank Dylan with an award for best young novelist. So you know what's gonna happen. Some publisher out there is gonna go, hey, give me that book. That should be spread out in libraries. All That's gonna pay country. for Dylan's college career. Waiting for it to happen. Very well, good. Author and illustrator. There yes. you go. Very good. Yeah. Well done, well done. Let's go outside with live cam. We've got uh, some clearing skies now. Seeing a lot of blue here. Tim Shrews jumping up into the 30s now. 35 so far, the official high here in San Antonio, 21 was the low this morning. And you look at the records, was it a record? No, the record low is 18 set back in 1912. But we did get close. Record high is 85 set back in 1954. That obviously not in jeopardy and it will be below average today. We expect highs to really probably stay in the 30s or maybe get close to 40 this afternoon before falling back into the 20s tonight. Another look at that weekend forecast is coming up. Welcome back. Let's take a look at the rainfall so far this year. And I show you this because obviously Wednesday night and the Thursday we got some good rain uh, before it turned to freezing rain and sleet. Uh, we picked up about 1.7 inches here in San Antonio. So that puts our yearly rainfall total to about two inches. We're still a little bit below average. And when you factor in the end of 2021, we are still below average. But it went a long way to helping us sort of get back closer to that average. And we've seen the aquifer jump up too. So some good news there. Del Rio. Uh, still a little bit below average. Austin has done fairly well as of late. Uh, low temperatures this morning across the state. It did get cold in places like Amarillo down to zero this morning. It was negative one in Lubbock, 20 in Dallas, 20 in Waco, 21 here in San Antonio. There's a lot of cold air. We're going to see these numbers get a little bit warmer each night as we go forward. And uh, here in San Antonio, we're still going to drop in the 20s tonight, but not as cold as it was this morning. There's the scene outside. Some mostly clear skies now. 35 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 24. And we still have a good north-northwesterly wind at about 17 miles per hour. Makes it feel like it's uh, in the 20s still. Temperature-wise, 34. New Braunfels, 34. Randolph, 38. Stinson, 39 down in Pleasanton. 40 right down in Hondo. You're at 40 in Del Rio. Still some freezing temperatures in the hill country, but we're getting awful close to jumping above freezing. Even Kerrville has now, and that is fantastic news for those folks that were stranded earlier. Again, things are starting to move, and that that is uh, encouraging. Wind gusts. Anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour, we've seen those gusty winds out of the north, and that contributes to that wind chill. 25 is what it feels like here in town. 22 in Kerrville feels like 19 right now in Fredericksburg. Radar and satellite, well, there's no precipitation to speak of. The clouds are starting to move out. We have one little area of clouds here. It's moving through our eastern and southeastern counties. Should be completely clearing our area by tonight, and all of us will see clear skies, but we can see where some of that snow and ice uh, resides with the uh, satellite picture and already some of it's starting to melt. You can kind of see some of it fading away a little bit there, indication that it is 
uh, starting to melt in spots, but there's still going to be a lot of roads that are very icy, especially across uh, North Texas, not here, but North Texas, and it will take a while for those roads to kind of clear out. Uh, bigger picture yet, as we look across the country, this was a big winter storm system, and it is still dropping snow across uh, upstate New York. Uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine before it finally moves east and still bringing some showers and storms to places like Georgia and Florida. And we showed you earlier, Florida is out ahead of the cold air still. They've got temperatures in the 80s today. The rest of the country is dealing with the cold stuff. 38 degrees forecast high here in San Antonio. Some 40s on a map today, especially west and southwest of San Antonio. And uh, even in the hill country, we get above freezing today. And then tonight, temperatures dip back down into the 20s. 26 here in San Antonio, maybe some low 20s uh, in the hill country, but not as cold as we originally thought. So that's some good news. And as we look at the weekend, 50s both Saturday and Sunday, we'll have some freezes both days. And then, uh, of course, we have the Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive coming up tomorrow at 11 a.m. Temperatures should be in the 40s by then. And uh, it will be a little chilly to start, but nice afternoon. And the extended forecast, we're going to go 54 Monday, 60s next week. And it is a dry forecast from here on out, guys. I'll bet the Spurs are really happy that they have a rodeo road trip to get out of town with. <laughs> yeah, but they're probably going to be visiting some cold areas as well, typically. What? Change of luck. Yeah, okay. Nothing? I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. All right, David, just go order some more food or do something like that. Hey, you know what? The Spurs, they feel for DeJounte Murray because he was snubbed as an all-star. Plus, <laughs> in girls' high school basketball, Medina Valley picked up a key district win coming up. Not long after the Spurs tipped off with the heat last night, we learned that DeJounte Murray was not voted by the league's head coaches as an NBA All-Star Reserve. Murray is having the best all-around season of his NBA career. He's averaging about 20 points and is also in the top five in the NBA in assists and steals this season. His teammates are bummed for him. Personally, I, I'll kind of take it on us more than him because, I mean, our record, it's tough to put him in there. So, obviously, his numbers, his talent, everything, he's an All-Star. Um, so I feel bad personally, um, but he's going to keep working and he's going to get there. I think he's had an all-star year. Uh, the, the record takes some of the shine away from him, but, you know, uh, he's done it at both ends of the court. Uh, so, you know, the rebounding, the defense, the scoring, uh, he's been doing everything for us. So I'm disappointed that he didn't make it for him, but, uh, He'll figure it out. He'll keep working. Next up for the Spurs, the Houston Rockets tonight at 730. Fight night is almost here for Mario Barrios. El Azteca is making his move up to welterweight. And Wednesday, he finally met face to face with Keith Thurman at their press conference before the big fight. Barrios is looking to make a statement against Thurman during his debut at 147 pounds. You know, I'm trying to put the what's away division on notice that, you know, Mario Barrios is here. And, um, you know, like I said, I mean, Keith Thurman, he's a great fighter. He does a lot of great things. But it's my job, you know, to go in there on Saturday night and do everything better. And that's exactly what I intend on doing. You can see this fight tomorrow on pay-per-view. And in a surprise move last Sunday night, Jesse Bam Rodriguez is no longer fighting for a flyweight title tomorrow on DAZN. The main event on that card lost one of its headliners due to a non-COVID-related illness. 210 Bam will now face veteran boxer Carlos Cuadras in the main event in Phoenix, Arizona for the WBC Super Flyweight title. You can read more about both of these fights right now on the instant replay page of KSAT.com. The Medina Valley girls basketball the team is still undefeated in the District 28-5A after a hard-fought victory against 10-2 Harlandale this week. The Panthers used tough defense and a total team effort on offense to build a 30-13 lead at halftime. The Indians made things interesting in the second half, but Medina Valley never let Harlandale cut the lead below double digits. Ileana Morales scored a team-high 13 points as four players finished in double figures for a 56-39 victory. Oh, it's amazing. Um... We, we beat them way more than what we did in the first place, and I just felt that much better because it was a lot hanging on to this game. We all knew more of what we were getting into. We knew which players to watch out for, how to defend them, how to 
stop some of their stats from going up the way they usually do. The Panthers will travel to Southside Monday night at 630. That game is moved from tonight to Monday due to Medina Valley canceling school because of the weather. That's per head coach Justin Russell. Guys. Thanks, Larry. Look who's in the studio with us today. Michael's, he's trying to stay warm as long as possible. He's got his cowboy boots on, and I bet he's got yeah. some wool socks in there. Oh, we, yeah, we've got some warm socks on, and then look who's staying at home, Hi. too. Hey! Probably got fuzzy slippers on hey and there. a fire going. Yeah, I bet, she, I bet she's got slippers hey, on. Because tomorrow morning, it's all going to change for y'all. Yes, indeed. Let's say it all together. Let's rodeo San Antonio. Rodeo San Antonio. <laughs> yeah, there are 75 Longhorns in the Western Heritage Cattle, uh, Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, and they belong to Dr. Scott Kimball. Now, he was going to bring one of those Longhorns down to Market Square, and the bull's like going, eh, no, 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 it's too cold for me. So we're giving him a break. We're going to give you a flashback to 2020 when Dr. Kimball last brought the cattle to Market Square. And, of course, this is all for the big Western Heritage Parade and Cattle Drive, which is tomorrow starting at 11 a.m. We, of course, will be hosting, and you'll love it here on KSAT 12. All right, get ready to ignite your inspiration with grilling. We get tips and tricks from Texas Barbecue social media influencers, Al Frugoni Barbecue. And want to rest, relax, and rejuvenate? We check out the Lazy Lavender in the Texas Hill Country. And if you're looking for a fine dining spot for Valentine's, grab a table at the Landris at the Thompson Hotel, and you could possibly win a meal there. Yes, you will find out how you can win a spin on the KSAT Insider Prize Wheel to score breakfast or lunch or another great prize. You'll get to watch our first contestant ever try their luck today.